Hi, happy Friday. How are you? Sun is gorgeous again. I hope you've managed to get some fresh air. I went out for a massive long walk this morning, which was just beautiful. I walked for over an hour. I listened to some stuff while I was walking and just absolutely loved it. But here I am now to talk to you. I thought I'd do this in here as well today, by the way, because I've been doing lots of um, quick little chats around things that I coach and things that I do. So how I apply the things in to my life and my business that I coach. And you should have seen the videos, but I thought I'd come in here and do it live in here today just to shake it up a little bit. So we're on day seven. I've been doing this for a week already and each day I've shared it with you. I've done a little written post as well to share that with you. So today we are talking about procrastination. Oh my goodness. One of those words where um, I hear people talk about procrastination all the time. So some people are almost wearing like a badge of I'm an amazing procrastinator with real pride. Um, others will say, no, I'm not. I'm just totally busy all the time and I don't put stuff off. I just plow through things. I'm, I'm massively busy and I, I, I'm i just busy, busy, busy. But actually, there's a few ways that procrastination can show up in your life. And there's also a few reasons why procrastination can show up in your life. So let's just talk about that for a minute. So it's, I guess it's a different feel to it when you work for yourself or when you work for somebody else. Um, and when you work for somebody else, there are things you need to do by a certain time normally. And you've normally got somebody who you're accountable to that will ask you about the thing you're supposed to do. So you can only really put it off to a certain point. Vanessa, hi, lovely to see you live. But it's different when you work for yourself because there isn't that person. There isn't that boss, that colleague that's waiting for you to do the thing that's going to chase you. It is just down to you. So it's even if you're the best doer in the world when you're an employee, once you step into a place where you work for yourself, you can find that some of these characteristics you didn't even know you had, like being a procrastinator, suddenly start showing up. And it's a bit like, well, hang on, I used to be able to just be really busy. Why is it now when I'm working for myself and it like it matters in a, in a whole different way that I'm not able to get to that stuff that I know I need to get through? So yesterday I talked about goals and I talked about the way that goals can keep you focused on the actions that you take. And it's really, I haven't done it in this order by accident because procrastination and having goals have got an absolute relationship between the two of them. So yesterday I talked about the beauty of having a goal because from your goal falls out of that your actions. And if you're doing actions that relate to your goal, then you're going to be moving yourself forward. This is particularly important if you know that you're starting to show signs of procrastination because when you do sit down to do something, it might be that you go off and focus on something totally random. It might be that you sit and read some stuff under the under the, the guise you're telling yourself that you're researching. It could be that you literally just sit scrolling through Facebook, scrolling through LinkedIn, checking out people on Instagram, and again, half thinking that you're doing your work, but actually you're not doing any of those actions we talked about relating to your goals. So why is that? Why do we do it? Why when we have our own business to grow and to develop? And you know, let's be clear, you probably set your own business up so that you can be paid for what you do, so you can share your product or service with the world. You didn't just do it so you can fill a few hours in the day. So why is it when you work for yourself, procrastination creeps in? So there's a couple of things that it can be, and you will know yourself which one of these resonates. So the first is fear, massive fear. So are you afraid of doing something which you know is, is sort of on the list to do and you're not, you're not kind of feeling it because you're dreading getting to that thing? And the fear can be, can be born of lots of different things. It might be just because you don't know how to do it. So there's technical stuff which I've got to sit down and do. I've got to build ready to launch something to you next week, which honestly... I'm not loving the prospect of having to do. The sun is shining, my children are outside playing. I would rather do a million and one things and sit and do that. But I know that if I don't do that, then I can't do what I'm wanting to do next week and I can't bring to you and launch to you my next challenge. 
So I know I'm gonna need to just literally knuckle down, blinds closed and get on with it. So for me, it's not so much the fear, but the other reason that it can you can end up adding things in that are procrastinating is because of self-doubt. So it's because the ego is turning up and that subconscious in your mind is saying, are you sure that you can do this? This is new, this is scary. So I think we're just gonna put a few little seeds of doubt in your mind to put you off, knock you off your course and kind of give you something else to distract you. So, you know, there's no point in doing that, says this little voice. Why don't you just go and do that instead? And depending where you are in your own development and how confident you're feeling about the business you're taking forward, it can be either of those things. And actually, they kind of feed off one another because if there's a fear of something, there'll be something deeper underneath that. So it could be that self-doubt's breeding the fear and fear is then breeding self-doubt. And the more that you listen to that inner critic and that negative talk, the lower you get and the less you take action towards it. So it's something which can be really hideously crippling and it can lead to all sorts of things. It can lead to massive frustration. So if you know you're a procrastinator, but you've got a list of things that you know you want to get done to move your business forward, when you've sort of finished for the day and you're sitting reflecting on what you've achieved and what you've done and you look at this list and it's still the same, it can be really demotivating. It can be really just you lose your confidence in being able to get stuff done and move yourself forward because you didn't do it today so right now you've got a massive list to do tomorrow so it's it's a case of right I'm gonna have to roll that forward or I'll add another couple of things on and 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 now I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow and and, and the whole thing's just like oh I might as well just and then the ego wins because it's managed to convince you not to take that action which is what it's trying to do now let's be clear about what the ego is there for the ego is there to try and keep you safe. It thinks that you should stay in your little familiar bubble of what you're used to doing, how you're used to doing it, what you've always known. And if you step outside of that, you're likely to get shot down in flames. That is your fear and that is the voice of your ego. And, you know, unless you are literally looking to jump off a cliff without a parachute, then it's unlikely to be that risky. Yes, you might end up taking some risks that, push you forward you know it could be a good thing and and you know what's the worst that can happen but your ego doesn't know that your ego is trying to keep you safe so how can we deal with that procrastination and those elements when they they turn up the biggest way and the way that I talk clients through this when they kind of hit this hit this moment and you know let's be really clear this will hit every one of us at different times I am a doer, I am a plough through a list, write a list, do my important stuff and get on with it. But procrastination still hits me. Like I said, I should have already done the things on my list today. But there they are, they're still on my list. So how can we deal with it? So for me, it's about knowing that those actions are aligned. So it's, it's connecting those actions back again to those goals. So that I know that if I do X, then it is, it's contributing towards Y and Y is my bigger goal. My bigger goal then contributes to my vision and so on and so on. We're back to yesterday. So knowing that those actions may not be the thing that you're absolutely going to love and actually it's a bit scary and you don't know how to find the information. It might not be the most fun thing in the world. Knowing all of that but going, do you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. That is one of the bravest things that you can do. So you're going into it with your eyes open and you're saying, yes, I'm doing this anyway. So sort of having that inner conversation with yourself is really powerful. The other thing as well is is switching your day to actually get through those things first. Now, this might have been true of me years ago when I perhaps had a really difficult conversation to have had. Perhaps I was having to give bad news to somebody. I was having to tell them something that that I knew that they weren't necessarily going to want to hear. I would put that conversation off and off and off and off all day long and that just made my day feel horrible. I would, I'd sort of be sitting dreading permanently, well, I'm gonna have to speak to that person about a thing and they're not gonna be happy, so I'll just put it off and put it off. And all the time I've got this kind of battle going on in my mind. I learned after trying to, to take a different approach that if it was the first thing I did in my day, number one, it was never as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And number two, everyone can move on from there. So you have the conversation, 
it's difficult, it's whatever it is, you, you do the thing on your, in, that's on your list that you don't want to do, you get it done, and then you move on for your day. And, you know, that can be true of so many things. So if you hate going live, if, you know, it feels just the most horrible, cringy, hideous thing, if you sit on that feeling all day long, it's going to influence everything that you do. So when you try and perhaps go and do some research or you're trying to write a piece, you're trying to create an email, you're, you're um, bringing together some, some bits to write a course or a work, whatever it is you're doing, creating your offer. If you've still got that thing in your mind that you say, oh God, I've said, told myself I'm going to go live, but oh, I don't really don't want it. Oh, I don't really don't want it. Oh, it's horrible. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, and then suddenly, oh, it's too late now. The people aren't going to be watching. You know, it's a waste of time you're going live now and you haven't done it. You've avoided it. But actually, if you got up and did that as your first thing, it feels amazing because it's like you've climbed a mountain to begin your day. So the rest of the day, you can just coast through your day going, that's in the bag, done it, done the horrible job, and I'm over it now. And actually, the more times you force yourself to do something that feels like a big thing, then the easier it gets, genuinely. So the way that I coach this is to say to people, firstly, have that conversation with yourself. Why is it that you think that you're procrastinating? Is it is it fear and what, what's underlying that fear? So I really try to dig beneath that that sort of surface, the way that procrastination can show up is, is, is amazing actually and people can feel like they're being so productive and yet they're not really moving things forward, they're doing things behind the scenes and they're busily writing this and they're, they're writing like massive pieces for their ideal clients but they haven't found an ideal client yet, they're doing lists, they're spending time research, they're signing up for new um, training courses, there is a million and one ways that you can do it. But actually, just checking in as to why you're doing those things and where they tie into those goals is a good sanity checker. And then once you've got to that, you now know that, yes, actually, I do need to do that thing. It's not a, well, I was just using it to put off doing what I thought I needed to do, that I do need to genuinely do that. I'm just really put off because there's a thing crawling on the other side of a vase, a glass vase I've got on the on the windowsill. It's made it look about 10 times bigger than it is. So it's probably like a little fly, but it looks absolutely massive because it's sort of magnified in the bottom of the vase. Anyway, um, so if you can turn it on its head, so you know that you still need to do the thing. It isn't a distraction. It, you're not getting pulled into something to put off doing something else. Then doing them first is absolutely what I advocate. It's getting, it's like the proper, like grab the ball by the horns, get on and do the thing. The easiest way to get into the habit of doing that is have no more than five things on your list and you write that list the night before or when you're deciding that that day's work is over. So before you close everything down, before you shut your notebook, before you shut your laptop, you write five things down and they are your five most important tasks. I hope none of them will be carried over but if you just have five you need to check that they are all aligned with actions that are towards your goal or are they time fillers are they are they things that you're just putting on there if you don't have five then it's fine you've only got three brilliant that's even more focused and then you leave those as the sort of thing whether it, you put them on a post-it note or you've got them on the front page of your book so that when you get up the next morning you do nothing else until you've done those things now i've got certain things that i write down for every day so that i'll carry them over every day every day every day every day because it helps me get into those positive habits. And if I didn't write them down, I'd probably still avoid doing them. So if you've got that as a record, get them written down, commit yourself to doing them, get them done first thing. And then you climb the mountain and the rest of your day is productive. You just feel totally different about your day. You're like, yeah, I've totally smashed it already. And it's only 10 o'clock. So that is how I coach it. And how I live it, I've kind of weaved that in. I use that five most important, for my MITs, most important tasks. Carry them into the next day, knowing then that when I start my day, I can be productive from the moment I start. It's not a case of, right, where, what am I doing today? Where shall I start? I know already what I'm going to do. And I know what that, what that task links to in terms of my goal. That's key for you. So I hope that has been helpful. If you've got any questions at all on this, please drop me a note, drop me into the comments. I will read them all. I'll, I'll try and respond. 
um, and I will see you all tomorrow. What is tomorrow? We are going to talk about being confident in your own abilities. So it's a little bit of superpower stuff, which I love. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your Friday. I will see you tomorrow for another one, either live or I'll post a video across into here that I've done in my group. Don't forget, I still have a few days of the discovery calls available. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be talking to you next week about what I'll be opening the doors to, um, which is another challenge that I'll be, be hosting um, in early June or mid-June. So I'll be talking to you about that. So actually my discovery calls, um, diary slots will close then. So if you're in that position where you're thinking, yeah, I probably have got a few ideas, but I don't know where to take them. Just a call. It is literally me finding out about you, you finding out a little bit more about what I do. Um, and yeah, we'll be, we'll, we'll be on for about half an hour find out a little bit about one another. So I've still got some diary slots available for those. If you want to book one of those in, you just need to send me a direct message. There's no funky uh, scheduler, you're talking to me and we'll book that in and get that booked in, but I will be closing that at the end of next week. So please take action, do it, put it as one of your MITs and go and have a fabulous Friday. See you later, bye.